All right, peoples. Woo! What is up? It has been too long. Uh, today we're gonna finally get into assembling the ass end. Man, I'm. I apologize for taking so long to get this next one out, but I've been waiting on some parts, and uh, you guys can have some sympathy on that. You know how that goes when you're waiting on stuff. There's nothing you can really do. I couldn't put anything together back here because I was missing a couple of O-rings and a couple of uh, couple of nuts and a couple of washers here and there. And I had to take care of a bunch of the tech side. Uh, that's been taking up uh, some of my time right now because, you know, um, well, you got to make money. <laughs> no, there's no sugar coat in that, you know what I'm saying? You got to make money. So yeah, behind the scenes, I'm a, I do websites and uh, I do all of the stuff behind the scenes on all this and I had to take care of a bunch of the technology side of it, which uh, that's for a whole different kind of, kind of ball game. If you guys want to know any of the tech side, any of the web design or any of that uh, good stuff, hit me up in the comments, let me know. I'll tell you guys all that stuff too. I'll throw up a video on uh, designing 11 Gallery ATV's website. So yeah. If you want to go to it, it's 11galleryatv.com. Uh, but anyway, we got everything we need now. So the time has come to put this ass in together. Yes, I can't wait. You can see part of it down here. Here's that beautiful swing arm. I got it painted up beautiful. Where that sticker was, no longer. So yeah, I'm just sitting here enjoying a nice, uh, one of my favorite beverages of all time is the Jones Soda. Green apple. It is uh, delicious with real sugar, real cane sugar. Woo! And, and no, I'm not trying to promo this either. They're not paying me a goddamn thing, but I just happened to have this in my hand while I'm sitting here. Figured I'd fill you guys in on a cool ass drink. Some Jones soda. Green apple is the bomb. Woo! Uh, anyway, like I said before, we're not going to do a whole bunch of bullshitting. Uh, no more talking in front of these videos, but it's been so long I figured I might as well tell you guys what why it's been so long. Uh, I didn't forget about you. I appreciate each and every one of you for all of your comments too. I appreciate all you guys, uh, the great comments and stuff, and yeah. So, make sure that you're, if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe down there. And make sure that you ring that bell to get notified when all the new stuff is coming up because we still got a motor to put in here after we finish this back in. But yeah, whoo, make sure you uh, give the thumbs up down there, like it, and uh, make sure you throw a comment down there. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know, uh, you know, anything. Uh, ask me any questions. I'll answer anything. If you've commented before, you know that I'm pretty good at answering anything that uh, anybody has to say. If I can. Uh, anyway, if you remember the last video, we got the handle, we got the front end all buttoned up. Yep, we got everything torqued down. We got the handlebars on. We got the controls hooked up. Uh, now it's time to reverse that situation and come on back here. And I'm going to show you the pieces here real fast first, and all the pieces we're going to use and why I chose what I chose. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Woo! <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, before we get rolling, check it out. I got the new bar pad that is the right size. Woo, look at that. That is the Van Halen Jump. It's actually a flight BMX pad, but man, that thing looks sweet. The colors match beautiful. Yeah, so that's one update. And check this out. So yeah, check it out. We got the new blue clevis. Uh, if you were watching the last video when we put this brake and all this stuff on. Woo! That looks beautiful. Look at that. And this clevis right here is only, it only fits this uh, CR, CRF brake master cylinder. Uh, because these, uh, this right here is skinnier on this one than it is on the, on the 200X master cylinder. And... Here's what we're going to do today. We are going to assemble all of this stuff today. Yeah. We're going to start out with the swing arm. We're going to put that together and uh, we're going to throw the shock in next. And then we are going to insert the carrier 
I went with the red carrier. And the reason why I did that was because, check this out. What? We got some beautiful Showa graphics that are going to go on the side of the swing arm. Right like that. And it will match that, that red carrier, I think, pretty good. The red carrier is kind of darker than I had wanted, but... I believe the contrast with the, this and the red Showa sticker is going to set it off. Without further ado, let's get this swing arm assembled and get this sucker rolling. Yeah. All right, folks. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to start assembling up the swing arm. And this isn't going to take very much because we're just getting rid of a million pieces, which is awesome. So check this out. These are the old pieces that I have off the old swing arm. Got your little uh, bushing that goes in there, and then you got a cap, and then you got your collar that goes through here, and then the pivot bolt goes through all this stuff, right? Before I found these awesome looking, awesome Delrin bushings, this is all we need right there. That's it. Replaces everything. Uh, one on each side. I already put this one in just to get the hang of how it works and stuff. And just, just we just pound it in. Done. That's what she said. Woo! <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, I actually bought myself the All Balls kit uh, before I found these things in anticipation that we're going to need new bearings. We're going to need all this new stuff. And guess what? I'm not using any of it. So I'm just going to save this for a rainy day. And these OEM pieces that I have that are still pretty good shape will save those for a rainy day. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to pound this other one in. And this is how easy it is. We're going to line it up. till it bottoms itself out. And that's that. Man, how easy is that? And check this out. The pivot bolt just goes right on through like so. Of course, we're gonna grease it up and uh, put it in the frame, but you get the picture. That's it. That's all there is to it, peoples. We just saved all those pieces. Now, all right, let's get the rest of this thing together. All right, next we're gonna put on our chain slider. And they still sell these. And our chain slider, our chain slider is just going to go right here. All right, we're gonna blue Loctite these. And the other one. And I am going to torque these to 88 inch pounds. 88. 88 and now we're chain slotted up There's really not much to uh This swing arm we do have one more thing to put in though They don't sell these anymore So we're gonna have to reuse the old ones, but they're in pretty nice shape except for this Where the bolts go through but uh I think we can make do. Hmm. There we go. All right, and they just sit right on in here. 
and the other one and then we'll just line it up so that it goes right on in the slot right there and there we go now we're ready to rock and roll with that and uh, let's move on now that we have our Delrin bushings pounded in here uh, it says we can omit these caps, but you know what? They still fit over the top of these Delrin bushings. And without them, they kind of leave a lot of space in between each side. So I'm going to use the Delrin bushings with a dust cap because they fit inside of there and that will make this baby fit in there very tightly, which I'm going for. See, here's the other side. It fits right over the top. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get it started, uh, but I feel like in the long run, this will be the way to go. So let's get our axle greased up because we are going to have to uh, put this in very, ever so slightly and then we're gonna have to shove this guy up through and then we're gonna have to finagle this uh, dust cap on. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get some grease on this pivot bolt So we're going to take our Maxima waterproof grease here and we're going to grease up the pivot bolt really nice so that, uh, and in this case, since we're using the Delrin bushings, we really don't need a ton of grease on here like we usually would use because otherwise it's just going to squeeze it right back out again. But we'll put a light coat on here. You want to avoid the threads. And this is just to keep it nice inside of there, of course. Because there is no collar. The collar is uh, not used in this application, so this will not be inside of any metal, but we're still going to grease it just to keep it from corroding. And now, what we're going to do is put this in so that it comes out and we can feel it touch the other side right here. So we're just going to rest that right there. And we got the cap over the Delrin bushing on this side. So now we're going to put the cap on. This, this one won't stay on, but uh, let's make sure my hands are all clean so we don't get the, the paint greasy. Okay, so we're going to put the Delrin bushing on the other side and see it fits over there tightly. It won't stay, but we can get this fed in there. And now... We want to catch this side. There you go. That's what we want. Then we're going to take our rubber mallet and we're just going to crank it on through here. Until we get up here. And now we need to get this side situated. There it is. And look at that. Now we got dust seals on both sides. And now we're gonna put this baby up on a makeshift jack here <laughs> that I have with a, uh, this is all full of uh, empty cans so that it won't crush it. And my box here, I think it's from light bulbs or something stupid. Wow. All right. Somebody's out there ripping up the... Yeah, it's kind of cool. I live uh, I live in a city, right? I live in Phoenix. But there is a road right outside of my house right here that my backyard butts up against and my pool's up against. And it is a very straight road with no driveways that come out of it. No businesses, no nothing. There's one road, which is right here on the corner. And other than that, it's straight. Perfectly straight. All the way down... And it's got a couple open fields. So, yeah, the burnout people are crazy on this road. And they you can always hear somebody drag racing or something. It's pretty cool, though. <laughs> I ride my four-wheelers and three-wheelers on the road, man. It's awesome. Anyway, so there we are. We're just going to fit everything together loosely right now. And uh, then we're going to torque everything once we get it in place. 
Next, we're going to hook up our shock in here, and we're going to get it hooked up into the swing arm. So let's get to it. First, let's put our nut, our uh, nut on the other side of the. Uh... All right. Now that we got the swing arm in, uh, we're going to hook our shock top mo mount up, and it's going to go right through here, and the reservoir is going to go up through and the hose is going to go into these two little uh, hooks right here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, all right, so before we wanna put the shock in, we're gonna have to put the seals in here, the dust seals, and I got one of them in there already, using the old handy dandy vise here, and a 17 millimeter socket. So what you wanna do is uh, this inner is going to go inside and this is gonna face out. So what I like to do is, since this uh, has this little cup in there, I like to just fill that up with grease. Just fill up that whole, that whole cup in there with the grease. So that every little part of that cup is full of grease. Kind of like so. And then you want to make sure you put a little bit of grease around the outside of here. All right, so once again, this side goes out. And where we put the cup and the grease in there, that's going to go inside and stay full of grease. So you want to just get it started as best as you can. That's as far as it's going to go by hand. And then what we do is we put a rag in there on the side that's gonna go against the shock. And then we take our 17 millimeter socket and we line it up against the seal. We try to get it straight and we try to get it where the part's raised up. And there it goes. There you go. And you can see there's a little, it's raised up a little bit out here as well. All right, and for some reason, it's not doing it right. So we're going to have to uh, flip it, try it from the other side. Or, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm not fucking around anymore. It's going to sit right there. And if you can't get your vice to work, you're going to have to finish it off with the power man. It's like, finish him! <laughs> Reminds me of the old Mike Tyson's punch out. Finish him! I think that's what it said. Anyway, one of those did that. But anyway, let's just grab it and... There it went. Now it's flush. Now we got everything flush down in there. We could have done that to begin with. That's what I usually do anyway. I just tried this new method because I wanted to see if it was any easier than my handy dandy uh, hammering method. It is not. It, uh, I believe the hammering method works just fine and probably better because it went in there straight. So now we can mount up the shock. Let's get the shock in the frame there. We got a little collar that's gonna go through the top there, and we're gonna grease up the top of, we're gonna grease up the part with no threads right here so that it doesn't seize up inside of there. And of course, once again, we have our maximal waterproof grease in order to accomplish that, so let's get it done. All right. Yep, so we're gonna grease that up. Just a light coat of grease. We don't want any on the threads, and we wanna to try to Try to keep it all in the collar and try not to get a lot on here because that'll affect the torquing, the torque specs and stuff like that. No torquing, don't torque, don't affect the torque specs. <laughs> all right. That should be plenty there. All right, next step, we'll put us a little bit of grease on the outside of here. It's gonna go through the, the top of the shock there. So we want this all greased up nice. All right, and then that just goes right into the shock 
top right here. All greased up nice. And then we'll send this guy through here. And make sure this goes down through there. And this guy goes right up in here. And then we put the, the bolt through. And there we go. So this one doesn't have a nut at the end. It just catches threads right here. So we can just get that started. And it takes a 14. Just snug that down and we're gonna to torque everything at the same time. The pivot bolt, this bolt, we got a bolt that goes through here now. All right, next let's hook us up our lower uh, mount. And uh, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but there's a bolt that goes through, there's a little hole right here on the sides of this. And uh, I can't get rid of my camera any lower for some reason on this tripod. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it that this bolt is going through the hole that's in there. <laughs> and we're gonna do the same. Uh, we're gonna grease up the inside of this before we put it through. Just a light coat again. We don't want any on the threads and you wanna make sure that it doesn't uh, get caught up inside of there and affect the torquing specs. So yeah, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, uh, You want to get it started and then we're gonna to have to pick this up a bit and we missed just like so and then we put the nut on the other side all right next we are going to mount us up the reservoir and it is going to go right through here and out through here. And it's gonna wrap into there and it's gonna go up through into that one. And this guy is going to hold it from going anywhere, like so. Now we can get on to putting it up on the side of the frame here. All right, so the way this works now is it's gonna go right here and it gets these little bands that just have threads on them. All right, so the way these work, this little uh, space right here is going to catch the frames. So they're gonna rest just like this. And then they get a little uh, rubber piece that goes on the back. And there is one that goes on the back side with the little ridge right here that catches the back side, and there's one that catches on the front side. So they go just like so. And these little guys have a little slot cut into it right here that go right on like so. And then they sit just like that. And then these guys clamp right on. Then they get a bolt. Hey, let's get the other one started. And I think the OEM ones 
were more like uh I don't know, I've seen different ways to mount these. I'm putting mine at the ends because, check this out, once we get the graphics going, we're gonna put, like I said, we're gonna put our show us stickers, but we got a Schmitty Racing suspensions to get on there. So we're gonna have to uh, figure out how that's gonna work, huh? I say we go all the way to the ends, huh? Does that give us enough room to mount up our sticker? Ooh, perfect. Almost. Let's put it right at the end. There we go. Now we can get our uh, Schmitty Racing Suspension sticker right on there. And that will look pretty badass, I must say. Woo wee! All right, now that we got uh, our shock in and our reservoir all buttoned up, let's throw us in our carrier, our bearing carrier down here. And I have an awesome red manufacturing billet aluminum one that I'm going to use here, and I'm going to use this dark red one. Uh, once again, I showed you earlier why I'm going to use it, because we got a Showa sticker that's going to go right here, and it's going to match perfectly. And I do have a silver one also, and it would look pretty cool also. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down there which one you prefer. Do you prefer me to use the silver one, or... Do you think I made the right choice with the red one? But like I said, it will have a nice contrast once we put the stickers on the side here. And also we got the rear hubs that are red and they're another shade that's in between this and that. So we should be all right. But anyhow, let's uh, get this carrier installed. And the first thing we gotta do before we put the carrier in is we gotta install this guy right here. This is the carrier, this is the uh, the caliper plate stay bushing. It goes right here. And it just kinda holds this guy on. So it kinda goes like so. And then that guy goes in there. But we're gonna have to put the, uh, a little snap ring around it first. So we got this little snap ring that goes on and holds it on. And what we're gonna do before we put this guy on is we're gonna put a little bit of grease on here. Even though we have fresh paint on there, a little bit of grease can't hurt. And in the snap ring groove, now we can put this guy on there. Ooh, yeah, see that feels nice right there. All right. And then we're gonna take our snap ring and we're gonna also uh, grease this guy up with the excess we got left over just to keep it from uh, corroding, getting nasty. And then we can grab this guy with the snap ring pliers and we just throw him on there. Boom. And that's all there is to that. And now we can get our carrier installed and it's gonna go, uh, this guy is gonna be on the, the left side. And before you do that, you wanna make sure that you grease up the Zerk before you uh, put this guy in there, which we've done. So what I'm going to do for safe measure is start out with some grease around the outside of here. And you want to get it on this rubber right here. Make sure that that doesn't get all corroded up. And on the other side as well. And I'm going to put some inside. Because, man, if you've ever worked on these, you know goddamn well that this is where we have lots of problems and where things get seized up and I don't want any of that happening.
All right, we got a nice coat going all the way through there. Now what I'm going to also do is I'm going to throw a coat onto here as well. Just a light coat on here. And inside of here, I don't know if this is overkill or not, but man, I have had these things. <laughs> I have experience with these things and I don't want uh, any uh, anything to happen here so we can wipe off the outside of this uh, once we get it all the way through because my hands are just full of grease now and there's no way I cannot touch it so all right once we got that all greased up and nice film on the whole goddamn thing we can shove it through see so, you now we got the excess on my hands we can get this seal greased up a bit and we can throw a little bit in here too We'll have to clean up some of this, but we do want some on here, too, because we have an O-ring that goes on here. Let's get that other uh, seal. All right, now we got a couple of O-rings. One is going to go on this slot around the outside of here, and the other is going to go inside of here. There is a slot. So let's get those on. All right, so we're just gonna put a coat of grease around the outside of this O-ring. And it's gonna go right around the outside of here. This O-ring goes here. This slot right here is for the snap ring. Here's the snap ring. That is gonna go into the slot right there. And then we have another O-ring that's gonna go inside of the brake caliper stay. Uh, the brake caliper plate, however you want to call it. Brake caliper holder. Whatever you want to say. But it's actually in the uh, diagrams, it's called the brake caliper stay. And in the manual, it's called the brake caliper plate. Alright, so this O-ring is just going to go right inside of here. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to get there. There it is. Let's just throw us an extra layer of grease around the outside of here. All right. And then this guy is going to go right up on here. And it's going to hold it in there. Just like that. And then we'll throw a nice little layer of grease around the outside of this. And then we will grab it just like we did the, the little one. And we'll... Uh, snag it on there we'll expand it there it goes all right then you want to make sure it's in the groove all right folks check it out what I ended up doing this thing was kind of sliding back and forth for some reason uh, this is not an OEM so you got to kind of make adjustments as they come along and I had an extra o-ring so I put an o-ring right here so it keeps it nice and tight right now and it will also keep dust from and dirt from getting in there and it will keep it from having play and all that good stuff so yeah uh, these are the two o-rings that were left over because when I purchased everything I had anticipated using the OEM bearing carrier and there are two o-ring slots on the oem bearing carrier which i forgot to mention so if you're using the oem one 
make sure that before you put that in there that you uh, change out your o-rings there's two little slots that are on the uh, oem bearing carrier and you want to put those on there first i used one for here on mine and we're all good so yeah next we're gonna move we're gonna put on our our uh, center bolt here and once again, we're just gonna attach these for right now, just so we can, we're just gonna put these in. These are the two, uh, the two carrier bolts as well that uh, lock this baby down so it can't move anymore. And we're just gonna put these in place right now to keep everything from moving around. And you wanna get it to go through the rubber, there you go. Cause once again, we put these rubbers in there. And we're just gonna snug them down right now so that this doesn't move because we're gonna get on to putting the axle in. All right, now that we got the carrier installed, uh, the next step is to install the axle. And before we do that, we're gonna have a couple of O-rings uh, that we need to replace. One of them goes right here on the left side of the axle, and we're gonna have to pull the old one, and we're gonna have to put a new one in there. They don't make these anymore, but I found on Amazon, I bought some cheap-ass, uh, Chinese freaking things. So we made some O-rings that are the right size. So they're gonna work good enough. They're gonna be better than this old crusty piece of crap that's in there. So first off, we're gonna have to pop the old one out. And we should be able to dig it out with a, oh, there we go, look at that. There it is. All right, see this thing is a, uh, see you can, you can tell when you stretch this old one that it's kind of hard and it's not in super great condition. But see, this is the new one and this is the old one. So they're pretty close to the same size. All right, so let's get to, once again, we're gonna use our Maxima waterproof grease and you definitely wanna get yourself a container of this because Man, I use this in so many places, and this stuff is just the bomb. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Actually, the first thing we're going to do... The first thing we're going to do is clean this guy out. See, look at that. You definitely want to get that stuff out of there. <clears throat> so let's go reset up uh, our new O-ring. And then we'll slide it up on. And there we go. New O-ring plunked in there. All right, folks, so as long as we're doing the O-rings, we might as well do the other one too. There's two of the same size. The one that came out of here is one. And then there's another identical size O-ring that goes inside of the lip of this, which is the brake rotor stay, the brake rotor holder, which is going to go, it's gonna slide up on here, actually, and sit like so. So let's get us, you guessed it, whoo, some more of our Maxima waterproof grease. And we're gonna grease up this dog and yeah, so let's get that greased up. And then it just goes right inside of this little lip right here. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get started. There it is. And we're going to be greasing up the inside of this anyway, because when we put the, uh, this on, we're going to be putting grease on the splines in here. So there you go. Now, we got our two O-rings on, and we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get this axle in there. All right, let's install our axle. Before we do that, though, we're going to want to grease this up right here real good, because this is the part that goes inside of there. So, yeah, we're going to want to... You know what time it is. The Maxima 
Waterproof Grease once again comes to the rescue. And we're gonna just, uh, a lot. We're gonna grease that son of a bitch up. Big time. And a little bit right there. Just a little film right there. We've already greased up the lips on the carrier, so let's shove this guy right on through. All right, next, we're gonna have to put our rotor onto the rotor stay right here. So let's get that done. And the way this works is you can see it says drive right here and you want that to be out. And since these are old bolts and nuts, I'm going to use some blue Loctite on these. You probably don't have to, but I'm just going to. It'll make me feel better. And these get torque between 14 and 22 foot pounds. And these take a 14 millimeter. And this one's going to be a pain in the ass because it seems to want to move. But hopefully I can zip it down with this. Nope. And hopefully we can persuade it to not move. Oh. Hey, I think I did it. Uh, all right, I tricked it. All right, so we're gonna install this first before we torque it. So let's just get some grease up on in here. And a little bit around here. And then make sure you put it on this direction, of course, because this right here is going to go into the carrier seal. We'll try not to touch too much of this stuff with that grease. All right, folks, check it out. Uh, I had the camera facing down when I put this on on accident, and uh, yeah. Anyway, it just slides right up on the splines, and that piece goes right on through the seal. That little piece that we greased, greased up goes right through the seal right there. And we're not going to be able to torque these until we get the wheels on because I don't have any leverage to put 18 foot-pounds on there. Uh, I could hold that right there, maybe with, with a channel lock or a pipe wrench or something dumb, but let's just do it the easy way and wait till we get the wheels on and then we'll torque this and we'll torque the sprocket and we'll probably have to torque these jam nuts and stuff also once we get the wheels on. So we'll just torque everything because we still have to torque the shock mounts and the swing arm pivot bolt also and whoo look at that blue clevis that thing looks badass doesn't it yes it does <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and get that sprocket on there on the other side and uh, yeah we can keep on commencing all right next we're gonna put on our sprocket and it uh has these little ridges right here and these are going to catch the bolts like that so they can't spin. And what we're going to do is these go in the back facing that way. So you want to put this on the axle first and slide it on through here like this. Line it up like so.
Boom! They come through from the backside. <clears throat> and then you're gonna have to spin this every once in a while. Now that we got all the bolts through, we have this little guy that slides on over and will fit right on across the top of all these. All right. We're getting ass heavy. I can feel it. It wants to move. Yeah, but it only goes about this far though, and then it will stop, so that's cool. All right, now I think we're gonna put the back wheels on here just to drop it so that we can get this torqued. So let's just temporarily put the back wheels on and then I can stop it from spinning and we'll get these torqued up. All right, now that we got the wheels temporarily stuck on there, we can be on the ground I'll be able to uh, crank these dogs down I think these bolts get torqued between 22 and 29 foot-pounds and I'm gonna use 25 so let's get her done 25 25 25 and 25 let's just make sure of all these again 25 25 25 25. All right. Woo! Torqued. We're torqued. Tork, tork, mm, tork, mm, tork, tork. <laughs> All right, now we can move on to the rotor. And these get torqued between 14 and 22 foot pounds. I'm going to use 18 foot pounds. So let's get it done. And this one's going to be a bit tricky because of the, the one we have that didn't quite work the way it should have. 18 18 let's make sure of that it kind of seemed like it was moving nope 18 18 And 18. And let's give him another check. 18. 18. 18. 18. And there we go. Rotors torqued. Drive sprocket torqued. So let's get these wheels back off and uh, we can start busting out our, uh, our jam nuts here and we'll get this thing secure. All right, folks. Now it's time to install the lock nuts and the snap ring, uh, actually the circle clip, sorry. We're gonna install the, the threaded sleeve with the lock nuts and the uh, collar and the circle clip. So what's gonna happen is we're first gonna thread on and they're gonna go this direction. And this guy is going to, this flat end is going to butt up against here. So first we're gonna thread this stuff on like this. These are left-handed threads. So we're gonna put this all the way back And then this one all the way back.
Now we're going to slide this on. Boom, there we go. All right, now that we have the lock, the jam notes on there and the jam note sleeve, we're going to put on the circlip and the circlip collar. So the circlip collar goes first, and you want to make sure that it's pointing out like this because it's going to back up into the circlip and cover it with this. And mine is kind of mangled. It only goes one way. So these two little notches right here are where the, the circlip opening is going to go. <laughs> Which yours should probably shouldn't have that problem, but mine's going to go right about there. And that's where the circlip opening should go. So let's just put a little bit of grease on here. And then we'll just try to get that baby up in there. Okay. So now the circle clip opening is right there and mine needs to come right up to right about there. And it's gotta cover it somehow. This is not gonna be an easy chore because this thing was mangled. They don't make this crap anymore. So I couldn't buy any more anywhere. So gotta make do with what we got. So let's try to fit that collar over the circlip. Well, we got the ends covered up. I think that may work. Let's see what happens. Ooh, uh-oh. Did it snap on there? It snapped on there! Woo! What? I heard it snap. It snapped on there. Oh my god. Alright, now hopefully we'll be able to give this some kind of torque because uh, if not, we're in for a world of hurt here. All right, folks. Now, this guy is going to get backed up into that, but we're going to apply some blue Loctite here. Before we do that, I'm going to put the rear wheel on 
over here on this side so that we can get it on the ground so we can back that thing up in there. I might have to put both wheels on. All right, peoples, we got the wheels on temporarily. They're just sitting on here and that'll allow us to get some leverage onto this guy. We can torque it down. And with these Motion Pros, they have a little uh, space right there for the old torque slot. So let's hook us up a torque wrench and get this baby torqued. And it calls for 58 to 72 foot pounds. And I'm gonna use 60. So we're gonna torque this dog to 60 foot pounds. And then we're gonna put, apply some Loctite and we're gonna back this other one up into it and it gets torqued to 72 to 87 foot pounds and we're gonna use 74. So let's get to torquing. 60 foot pounds on this guy. At least I hope we can get 60 foot pounds out of it. Oh yeah, 60 foot pounds. Woo! All right. Now that guy was not an easy chore, but we got it done. Now we're going to take some blue Loctite and we're going to dump it on the threads here. Oh no, if I torque it, I won't be able to get it off. I don't know how I'm supposed to torque that because if I torque it, I won't be able to get it back off again. I think I'm gonna have to just uh, torque this thing down as far as until they're even so I can get it back off again and we can see hopefully that matches where I'm at. Uh, we need 74 foot pounds here, I don't know. Well, I'm going to try the lowest setting and see if we can't get it to torque to 72 without moving the other one, I hope. Let's see what we can do here. I think we're even, and I don't think I can torque any farther. Because see, now I can get it off. I'm going to have to leave it like that. With the Loctite, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it. Well, that's going to have to do it. With the blue Loctite on there, hopefully that thing doesn't back itself back off again. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and uh, figure something out if it comes off. But, uh, all right, folks, now that we're down here, as long as we got the wheels on the ground and we got all this uh, where it is, well, let's put on our rear brake caliper and hook up the brake line and hook it up to the master cylinder. The way this works, pretty simple. This guy... You just want to zip the old uh, brake pads through the rotor and line up the mounts. Boom. But we're going to use, uh, I can't hold it there. <laughs> we're going to use some blue Loctite, of course. And we'll blue Loctite the other one. Oh no, it just doesn't fit. You gotta be kidding me. How am I supposed to torque that? If a socket doesn't fit on there. What kind of horse shit is that?
All right, well, these are supposed to get torqued to 18 foot-pounds, but I cannot get a socket to even fit in there. I don't know why, who designed that pile of garbage leave piece of crap lead thing, but we're going to go ahead and torque the bottom one, but the top one, I'm going to have to just hit it with this wrench and be done with it. <clears throat> there we are. That's torqued. <laughs> All right, now the bottom one, we're going to hit it at 18 foot-pounds. 18. I feel like the top one was pretty close to that, so we're going to be good to go there. And uh, while we're back here, let's just get our uh, brake line hooked up in the back. All right, so this is a Galfer braided blue brake line that's pretty badass, and it has a sticker on here that goes, this is master cylinder side. So let's figure out how this goes real fast before we hook up the back. All right, now we got our caliper mounted. Let's get our brake line on there. It's going to be a little bit different than the OEM one. And this is our crappy Chinese uh, brake. Remember that? Uh, so the OEM one goes this way. Uh, this one's going to fly out this way a little bit. And we're going to have to finagle it with our CR master cylinder up there. So here we go. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to fly this guy up through here. And we're going to put one cross washer on the back, one on the front, and pop that sucker right on there like so. We're going to leave it a little bit loose for now, and we're going to come up here and do the same thing. We're going to put one on the back, pop that sucker on here. And then it's going to fly all the way out here. So here's how we're going to have to route this. We got ourselves some different, uh, we got our these cool, these cool Phoenix, Phoenix Industries uh, billet clamps that are going to go on here. So we're going to mount this guy. Right like so. And then right like so. And that ought to keep it away from everything. And we kind of lucked out. Check it out. It's good that it goes this way because that's where we need it to be right now. So we're just going to clasp this guy on here. Right down in here. And this is a tricky one. This wasn't meant to work like this, but I'm going to make it work. So we're going to have to get this guy down there. Yes, we caught it. Just like that. And now we have to do that again up there. <laughs> so let's catch our brake line. And these have nylocks locks too, so there's no need for any Loctite or anything on here. And hopefully these don't back out. They, sh they should hold pretty good. So let's get this in here. Right like so. And that takes care of that. Now, we can torque these banjo bolts and they get torqued between 18 and 25 foot pounds. Um, I'm gonna torque them to 20, 20 foot pounds. This back one is a 14. This front one from the CR master cylinder, the CRF master cylinder is a 12. So let's torque these to 24 pounds, 
20. Woo, that looks pretty sweet. Now let's get this uh, top one, this other master cylinder, this banjo bolt torque to 20 foot pounds. Let's put a rag around this and put that in between there. And now we can torque it. Oh, if we don't hit it. Twenty. And there we go, folks. Braked up, ready to rock and roll. Now let's get the rest of those, uh, the pivot bolt and the shock mounts torqued, and we'll be done back here except for the wheels. We're not going to torque the wheels, though. We're not going to get the wheels torqued until we uh, can get the motor in it because we're going to need a drivetrain in order to, to get these, uh, these castle nuts torqued, I think. Maybe we'll give it a try. All right, before we move on, let's get rid of the sticker. We know which way goes where now. Now, let's get the pivot bolt torqued. All right, the pivot bolt gets torqued between 51 and 80 foot-pounds, and I am going to use 72. So it takes a 22 millimeter on this side and a 17 to hold it on the other side. So let's get this baby torqued up. 72. All right, now let's hit the shock mounts. And they both get torqued from 29 to 36 foot-pounds. And I'm going to use 32 foot-pounds. Thirty-two. All right, now let's hit the bottom shock mount, and again, these are twenty-nine to thirty. These are twenty-nine to thirty-six foot-pounds, and I'm using thirty-two. So this one has a nut and a bolt. So we're gonna have to hold one side's a fourteen, the other side's a seventeen. Thirty-two. All right, let's get this up on the jack and get these uh, rear wheels on like they're supposed to be. Get the castle nuts on, and we'll see if we can get them torqued or not. I'm not sure if we can. We might have to wait until we get the motor in here in order to get some tension on the, on the chain and all that good stuff. Or I might have to have somebody help me out because I don't know if I can hit the castle nuts with just sitting here like this. We'll give it a try, though. Let's give it a try. Let's get this up on the jack and, yeah, get these rear wheels on, the hubs. All right, folks, so basically, these splines right here are where the wheel hub's gonna go on. So we're gonna get some grease up on that. And we got ourselves some brand new OEM uh, castle nuts. Yeah, look at those fine dogs. So check this out, um, funny story. I got everything ready to go, right? And the axle threads on the other side were jacked up. So what I had to do I'm going to throw some pictures up of me doing it. I didn't record it for some reason, but check it out. I had to take an old castle nut. These are like Chinese pieces of crap. And I cut it in half with the Dremel. I'll show you a picture of it while I'm doing that. And then I had to put it on here backwards like this and match it up. And then I had to put some vice grips on here and then back it off to clean the threads back out again because they were kind of mangled from somebody hitting it with a hammer, <laughs> which kind of sucked. Uh, but yeah, then I got all the threads kind of cleaned up, but I still couldn't start a castle nut on there, so I had to file and file, and finally I got the threads hooked up so that we can get a castle nut on there. Uh, yeah. So that's how that happened. Anyway, let's get back on down to business. So we're going to grease up these uh, splines. So that we don't have this thing season up on there. And then basically, I have the hubs already inside the wheel. They're just uh, kind of hand tight on here. And you can understand how this works. If you don't know how to take a tire off, then uh, you have no business watching this. 
anyhow, uh, now all we do is we line up these guys, these uh, threads, the splines, with the splines. And we'll throw that doll down there. Boom. And then we zip a castle nut down. And then we'll see if we can't get this torqued. I don't think I'm going to be able to, but we'll give it a whirl. i tell you what, folks. We're not going to be able to torque this because I had the same problem with my 400EX build. Uh, I couldn't torque it until after I got everything under control and I got it out in the garage. And I actually had to back it up against the wall in order to use the wheels as leverage and step on them. And yeah, they get torqued pretty high. So we're not going to be able to do that inside here. But... In case you're at this point and you want to torque them, they get torqued between 87 and 123 foot-pounds. And I was going to use 94, so I guess I'll maybe give it a whirl, but I don't believe that we're going to be able to get this thing torqued to 94 foot-pounds in here. And these take a 27 millimeter. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that in here. I'm going to need some leverage. So we're going to have to wait on that. But anyhow, I gave it a shot, but you uh, you got the specs. And we'll just uh, have to wait on this dog. I'll get the other one done, and we can call this baby a roller. All right, once again, we're using our Maxima waterproof grease. Let's get those splines greased up on this last side. All right, and then once again, what we do is we match the splines up with the splines, and that's that. Let me throw us on our uh, brand new castle nut. And I'm just gonna do this one the easy way and zing it down for now. And then we'll get this baby torqued up to uh, 87 to 123 foot-pounds. And I'm going to use 94 as soon as we get on down to town. Well, we got our wheels on. And yeah, oh, the lock. The uh, lug nuts also, they get torqued from 43 to 51 foot-pounds. And I'm going to use 47. That's the same number that I use on uh, the 400EX. 47 all around. And we're just going to use 47 on here as well. Keep it in line with the other dogs so yeah there we are we got us a roller now we can get this off the jack and uh yeah let's get it off the jack and uh check her out shall we yes we shall Woo! what a beautiful thing this is yeah all right man look at that all of our hard work has paid off and look at how clean all of that looks. Oh my God. I can't wait to throw the motor in here. Woo. Oh my God, it looks so sick. All right, folks, check this out. We were only missing one little thing to make this thing a uh, badass. And what, what? Oh my god! Look at how sweet it is! Look at that beautiful piece of machinery! Oh my god! It wouldn't be complete without the rear fenders on there. Now we just need the gas tank.
Yeah, we're getting one step closer to having this baby out on the road, or the trails, or wherever we feel like taking it. All we need now is that big ass empty space right there to be filled. We need a motor. We're gonna get onto that next. Yeah, we got a ton of pieces and we've got, uh, oh yeah, we got the motor ready to rock and roll. We're gonna get onto that. And then we're gonna tackle the elephant in the room. Oh uh, yeah, in case you noticed, I kinda haven't said much about the old uh, other missing space there, like where fuel would go into a big ass gas tank. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna have to do some rust removal and we're gonna have to do some body work and some painting. But yeah, we can take care of it. We took care of the rest of this. We can take care of that too. But man, look at that. That son of a bitch looks beautiful. And yeah, make sure that you subscribe down there. Make sure that you subscribe down there and ring the bell. Should click that bell down there to notify, you know, every time that new videos are coming out, you get them straight into your inbox. Uh, every time you, whenever you log in, you'll see new videos from 11 Gallery ATV. Yeah, we're gonna get out of the motor and we're gonna get out of the gas tank. And we have the air box right there. There's another hole, but we have the air box. We just have to clean it up a little bit and shine it up a bit, but I have all the pieces for that. And yeah, we'll get into that. I got the carburetor too, so we'll get that rebuilt. I got a shindy kit for that. And we'll get into all of that. So, yeah. Woo. All right. Until next time, you know what time it is. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Woo.